Mm. I'm Cure, and this is a show about comics. Ugh. And when did you start drawing? Uh, when I was breastfeeding, I did it on, um, I, I used a fork like one of those little kitty forks to scratch the drawings into my mum's tit. Okay, ask me a question, something All serious. Right, well, um, how long have you been doing your comic for? Uh, Time-wise, forever. Because, you know, that's, that's how I like to look at it. All right. Sort of creative pieces, because that's all it is for me, it's just a creative outlet. <laughs> hey. <laughs> this is my first comic, it's a compilation comic of Melbourne cartoonists. Um, through this I discovered um, the world of mini comics. It's got about seven different artists in it or something, seven or eight. Uh, most of them do their own mini comics and will probably be interviewed by Clinton Gary as well. This is scary. This guy packs uh, supermarket shelves in Brisbane. Moved down to Melbourne for a while where I met him and uh, he did the cover. Yeah, he did the cover too, yeah. Yeah, that was. Uh... Boy, that would be about 70, 79 when I brought that out, and uh, I actually got my diploma of graphic design from Brown College by putting that out because I did no other work throughout the year. Yeah, I did a graphics course, apparently with uh, Roland Howard and uh, Nick Cove. Footy Mouse started around about sort of 1985 or something like that, and uh, there was this... I did a poster for a band called The Grizzlies. I did this cartoon strip of this sort of big swamp monster type character ripping off the head of Phil Grizzly, who had only seen once. <laughs> in, you know, they played at the, uh, the St Kilda Inn. And he, he came round to pick up the artwork and pay me for it. And he said, because I did the big swamp monster with a sort of oval mouth, he said, oh, that's football mouth. That's fucking Stewie. That's a guitarist in a band. Bang. Yeah, what, when, I can, uh, when I get round to comic shops, I do. I read 8 Ball and Hate. I love them. And uh, a lot of Popeye comics, really old stuff. I think I have uh, so many things that are visual. I don't know, namesake-wise, that's not the most important part, but heaps of black and white artists. Dave Cooper, for one, who's just amazing. <laughs> I think that's what I'd love to be able to do, is just keep continuing on with that story and that free-flowing art that he just has, man. Life. Life influences what you're doing, always. Um, the music, obviously, that I listen to and is reflected in the pages of the magazine, I get into quite a bit. Yes, it's all fodder for the, the paper later on. Right. Most definitely. Yeah. Spud evolved from me trying to search for the typical punter type kid who would go to the shows and get into the music. I first featured him as uh, the world stage diving champion on a pair of crutches with his foot in plaster and his head all banged up. And that was the uh, idea. Right. And it went from there really. Um, do you think you'll ever get it together in a compilation by itself at all? Or? I have thought about that. Um, but what I'm looking to do is to do an animation type version of Spud. I want to get him moving and talking and that type of thing. And I think that's where I'll be moving into independent territory there. I like stuff like Rick Griffin. I like a lot of the 60s guys. Yeah. Um, Robert Williams. I like people like that. Uh, Mad Magazine. I used to read a lot of the American version of Mad. Um, with people like Mott Drucker and all those people who do fantastic caricatures of uh, in the satire uh, 
pages and stuff. Also, most of the artists in Mad I really got into. Um, what else do I get into? Um, uh, underground comics mainly. Comics that um, uh, show some of people's personality. I don't like superhero comics. Um, okay, some cartoonists that I like. This is Robert Williams, who you probably have heard of, I'd imagine. Do a lot. Pretty tight. I went to saw him, uh, see him do a um, do a lecture in Sydney just recently, and uh, he was discussing how. Um, Cartoon art isn't accepted as a as an art form, and um, he's been doing he's been doing comics for uh, know, since the sort of fifties, probably sixties. This is his work. I like the black in this; it's a really good, rich black. Um, anyway, yeah. So he was discussing that, um, which I'm kind of like getting into at the moment. I'm in interested in uh, promoting promoting that idea. I like the idea of um, images and text. I think that um, is a very powerful medium. That's what, probably why I do comics. But I don't think I'll be doing comics for much longer because um, I've just started painting and I'm getting right into colour. I've lived in a black and white world for too long. I think it's time to move on. This is Eddie magazine. It'd be good if you could uh, interview Eddie. Well, basically, we're about promoting the work of artists and writers and cartoonists, and it's like it's it's. It's always been sort of integrated between the writing and the, and the artwork, so it's always been seen as it's all important in the overall appeal of the mag and just what it's about, you know. It means we have sort of like sort of twisted sort of stuff of Aaron and um, you know they're sort of well, I'm not really good at describing, but you know sort of satirical stuff of Andrew Weldon and quite humorous, um, but like. Uh, like full-length stories like Bruce Mut Mutard does, um, Kirsten Perry from she does some st stories as well, uh, Ross Tesorio, um, we've had Mark Mort, Michael Graham, that sort of stuff. We've had yeah variety from really full-on stuff to like single frame. No, he lives in Sydney, but he comes to Melbourne quite a bit, so you'll probably catch him. I like this. This started off as um like a stapled together rag, and uh, it's a good example of um support for uh, shop support which I was talking about before which there's none uh, it's a good example of someone who sort of looks like they're succeeding with this comic I'm, I'm actually going to go the other way and uh, go from the most polished glossy thing I can do right down to the most stinkiest cheap rag this is an old Sydney comic covers falling off it kind of uh, inspiration for what I did. Um, it's called Pounding Tails. I think it's like uh, late 80s and early 90s. It folded, I don't know why it folded. Basically the same idea, except Sydney cartoonists, different styles. Um, well, the, uh, that became Eddie Magazine. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that, you know, that's good. I think it's a really quality publication. Um, out of all the mini comics I've seen, uh, this, this one by Jared Ashworth, he's done 40 odd, something like that. I met him recently in Sydney as well. Interesting guy, kind of looks like Charles Manson on acid. And uh, this is his work, really, really difficult to read. It takes a lot of um, concentration, which I think is good. A lot of comics like you pick up and um, look through them and just like, get absolutely nothing out of it. I like to sort of say, you know, say something in uh, what I do. Is that the one with the razor blade? I don't know. I don't think I've actually read this one yet. No, I have read it. The one, uh, the one with the razor blade sticky tape to it? Yeah. No, I didn't get one of those, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, you can get those in Sydney. You, I don't think you can get them down here. Interesting uh, insight into the uh, man's psyche. It's like uh, each of these cats represents um, one of the four sides of his personality, and uh, you can see by his, uh, his style that he's a pretty tortured individual. Oh, I'm, I'm in the suburbs of Blackburn, that's where I'm coming from. I'm not sure where I'm going to either. Yeah. 
but the main the main part is the comics are just sort of on the spur of the moment. Or mine, I just do them with a pen. I just grab a pen and just have a notebook, just draw it. And then when I'm just, I think oh, I might make a new comic. I make a another issue or whatever. Just get all those sketches and stick them together, and that's it, man. No big thought process on my part. Nothing comes from real life at all. It just comes straight from fi fictional books. Because I like reading books, and I hang around libraries and like read a lot of books. And, what sort of stuff do you read? Uh, you know. Flo Bear and Nabokov and you, you and I go uh, in Tolstoy and uh, <laughs> Marcel Proust. Yeah, that sort of thing inspires my cartoons week by week. But, uh, sometimes uh, they're people that you know. Yeah, well, that's just complete fiction, what I write. It's got nothing to do with what happens. And let me just state, this has nothing to do with what happens in pubs on the weekend. Also, another reason why I did, th did that Vexed comic was uh, I sent a whole bunch of work to um, different places. This is before I found out about uh, the world of fanzines and mini comics, but uh, nothing real ever got accepted for one reason or the other. And uh, it, it, it would always look like um, I was going to get somewhere and the comic would fold. Like I sent something to this uh, Sydney one like many years back, but it, the, uh, it folded, ran out of money and folded just before um, I actually got a chance to get anything printed. So um, that happened to me about probably 70 times or something. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but uh, um, it kind of like became annoying. So um, when I got some money, I decided to print my own work and, uh, and did so. Then I found out about mini comics and the fact that you could actually print your own work. Um, for like fifty dollars, which is kind of good, except um, it's a bit of a restricted medium, I think. Trying to support people who do things like myself, just black and white, and you know, made in their, their home. You know, not made at an office, and not made for a company, or not made for any particular reason, except for their own. It'd be good to just be able to distribute your stuff to people who like to buy it through some sort of a mail or mail order. I've read a. Uh, what's it called? Fact Sheet 5 and it was like all predominantly like homemade stuff or just scenes as well. It was that scene thing talking about this revolution of backyard print. I think um, distribution is a very important thing. It doesn't really exist for, um, for what we do um, and I think someone should get out there and start a distribution thing. I tried um, selling them in the street. Uh, I, I probably sold most of them that way, just going down and sitting on like a, a main shopping street and um, taking this ammunition box with me and sitting there like a retard and selling things out of a box. And that's been good. I've got good response. It's a bit, yeah, it's a bit sus though. Watching out for the police because it's actually illegal. You know, zines are about just doing it yourself and getting out there and promoting work. And we've had heaps of shows like the one that's here and just to promote the work of the magazine and the artist in it, because that's what it's all about. Yeah, um, started doing cartoons for HM, then known as Hot Metal, um, back in about 1990, and um, Spud came along a year or so after that. Right, how did you get onto your Hot Metal? Um, I sent a, a uh, fax one day after reading a, an issue. I saw that there wasn't anything in the way of art in there. There were lots of photos and text, but there was no art. And I thought that maybe I could uh, do a couple of caricatures here and there. Sometimes I'll, I'll do a full self-contained story in many panels. Other times I'll do a story in panels that might continue on in the next issue. Other times I'll just do a whole self-contained picture that I hope can be more like a single work. At the moment, I'm using a whole bunch of different stuff. I use the uh, colour pencils, art markers, ink, tech pens, biro, liquid paper, airbrush, stuff like that. A bit of bit of everything. Bit of paint. Well, your your atypical uh, graffiti oh, the marker. Traditional line. Uh -huh. Handy on trains, but even better put to use on home projects. If you are thinking of getting into cartoons, uh, you can look forward to cramped wrists, long nights, lots of coffee, not many friends, backaches, life of poverty, but um, good music mostly. Always remember, kids, that irony is your best weapon. 
Irony. Irony was very big back in the 17th century, and it can still be used as a weapon. <laughs>